28 and 29. Here we go. All right. Um, where we left off with the last chapter is that there is a um, pageant at the school and um, Scout is a ham. <laughs> now remember, Aunt Alexandra and Atticus are not going. They're both tired, so the kids are walking by themselves. So before we get going further, I found a picture of Scout's ham costume. Now, unfortunately, it's black and white. Um, and if, you, if you're still confused and if you Google Scout's ham costume, it will come up. Hold on, let me find one that's like full screen so you guys can see it. Aha! See that like weird, so that the little boy's gym and then Scout would be in that. So there's just a tiny little hole for her eyes, but now you can see that it would be incredibly awkward to walk around. So the shape is made by chicken wire and then it's paper mache. So it's important to know she can't really move. <clears throat> All right, so they're walking to the pageant by themselves, Jim and Scout, and as they're walking, somebody is kind of creeping up behind them, trying to scare them. And it is Cecil Jacobs, um, Scout's arch enemy. <laughs> he was trying to scare them and they're like, Cecil, leave us alone. And so they're, so he is, is bothering them on their way there. Just being a kid, he's not doing necessarily anything bad. Just sort of lurking behind them, making weird noises. So that, that's gonna be important in a little bit. Okay. So the pageant happens, it goes off without a success. Scout is a perfect ham. Um, so what does Scout forget? So that the pageant has ended, it is nighttime now, they're walking home and Scout realizes she's left her shoes. So Jim is like, all right, come on, let's go. And then he's like, you know what? It's super late, the school's gonna be closed. We'll come back tomorrow and get them. Let's just go home. It is late, let's just get home. So Scout, it is not only walking home in that ham costume where she like can't really move and she can only see out of like a slit this big, she's also barefoot. Um, and this is like rural terrain. This isn't, you know, it would be uncomfortable to walk barefoot. So between being barefoot and being in that costume, she can't really move. So as they're walking home, it's pitch dark. Um, and, you know, that's another thing is I don't know, you know, here, you know, I live in the city of Louisville. So I live really close. I live in St. Matthews. I live really close to the um, Oxmoor Mall. So even in the middle of the night, if I were to walk out in my backyard, there's lights everywhere. I'm, I'm perfectly capable to see. They're out in the country. There isn't a mall across the street. It is pitch dark. Like you cannot see in front of you. So they're walking home in the dark. Scout has no shoes. She's in this awkward costume. They're just trying to get home and they hear somebody behind them kind of lurking. And they're, and they're like, Cecil, leave us alone. We're not falling for this again. Now, the first time that happened, Cecil came out and was kind of like, oh God, it was me. Cecil doesn't come out this time. And they're like, Cecil, we mean it, leave us alone. And then my next question, question three says, <clears throat> Scout's view of events are filed because of her obstruct, her obscured, they are obscured by her costume. Sorry, I can't read. Retell the events of the attack as you understood them from her. So basically, they think it's Cecil. They're still walking. All of a sudden, um, somebody like kind of jumps out. Scout is sort of like pushed. And because she's in this costume, she's sort of rolling. And she's only looking through this. And so what she sees is she sees another person like kind of tussling with Jim. And she's seeing this as she's rolling. So she's only seeing it, you know, in small bites, but she sees that there is a third person there who is attacking her brother. Um, and so now they realize this isn't Cecil because Cecil isn't a bad guy. He's just a kid. He was just trying to scare him. They realize that some, this is like an actual attack. When she stops rolling, she sees her brother lying lifeless on the ground. Um, <clears throat> for all she knows, he's dead. Um, and then she also sees another person. So she starts kind of doing her best to crawl over. And my next question is, Scout not being able to see touches a face that she quickly realizes is not Jim. How can she tell? She can tell because two things. The person that she's touching is a man 
who has like whiskers, has like a beard um, and whiskers from not shaving on his face. Jim is a young boy, he's not gonna have that. So that's clue one. And then clue two is this person reeks of whiskey. So she's like, oh my God, that's not my brother. So she keeps crawling around. She eventually finds her brother and he's, he's lying lifeless. Like he is unresponsive. She doesn't know if he's dead or alive. Um, and then all of a sudden, like things happen very quickly here, probably because she's kind of in a state of shock. So, so all she knows is they were attacked. They don't know who attacked them. And there's two bodies on the ground, a grown man and her brothers, and she doesn't know what's, what's going on. Um, all of a sudden, a fourth person is involved. She doesn't know who it is, she can't see. But all of a sudden, she is upright, and this fourth person is carrying her brother's like lifeless body to the house. So Scout is like trying to get home. She doesn't know who has her brother. She's like waddling around in this costume. So she gets home and this chapter sort of jumps. So they've been attacked. Scout has a very limited view. She's, and now all of a sudden she's home. So she gets home and Atticus um, is calling Hectate. He's like, heck, my children have been attacked. You need to get over here right now. And you know, Scout is still in her ham costume. And this is, a, this is another reason I defend Aunt, Aunt Alexandra. Your next question was, what is significant about the clothing Aunt Alexandra hands to Scout when she arrives home? Well, they need to get her out of this ham costume. This is the most ridiculous costume ever. So Aunt Alexandra is first like, oh my gosh, are you okay? And then she hands her a pair of overalls and is like, here, put these on. Here's why that's significant. Aunt Alexandra has wanted Scout in a dress from page one. She wants Scout to be this like perfect little Southern lady in her dresses and looks nice. And so the fact that Scout kind of dresses like a boy, she's a tomboy, she's wearing her brother's hand-me-downs really, really irks Aunt Alexandra. So this is where, as a reader, you have to make a big inference. But in that small little movement of like, here, here's your overalls, put these on, it's almost like Aunt Alexandra is realizing it doesn't matter if this little girl is in a dress or overalls. It doesn't matter. Like she almost died tonight. And what's important to me is that she's safe and I don't really care what she's wearing. So this is huge for her that in that moment, she like hands scout the outfit that she's most comfortable wearing. Okay. So what are Jim's injuries? Jim is not dead. Be rest assured. He is not dead. Um, he's basically, he has a really bad bump on his head and he's unconscious probably because he's in a state of shock and he has a broken arm. So he's not dead. Um, but I mean, a broken arm, that's, that's kind of serious. You know, somebody attacked those children and Jim got hurt. So, um, right in right now, you know, it's just the Finch family Aunt Alexandra and the doctor is there examining Jim. Hectate, the sheriff, comes back and um, is like, Atticus, we got a dead body. And Atticus is like, who is it? Who attacked my children? Who would do this? And if you didn't guess, it was Bob Yule. Bob Yule, who spit in Atticus's face and said, I'm gonna get you, um, attacked the children. And how is he now? He's dead. Who he attacked the children and is now dead. So I ask you all, to take a guess. Who do you think the stranger is that carried Jim home? Who do you think? I'll give you a hint. I'm about to tell you because I'm gonna keep talking, but I'll give you a hint. There is a character who is a pretty big part of the book at the very beginning who we have not seen in a while. And um, he has the initials of BR, Mr. Boo Radley. What's he been up to? We haven't heard from him in a while. <laughs> so, Let's go on, I think, yeah, let's go on to chapter 29. All right, chapter 29, my first question says, despite its awkwardness, why was it a good thing that Scout was wearing the ham costume? Um, we later learn that Bob Ewell was holding a knife and we can probably um, make an inference that he had the intention to kill. And so, um, you know, Jim has a broken arm, bump on the head. He's kind of in a state of shock, but he's alive. The injuries could have been a whole, whole lot worse. 
Scout is virtually unharmed because she's wearing that ridiculous bulky costume that, you know, he, if he would have tried to stab her, it wasn't going to go through. So it was almost like she had this big protective shield around her. Um, so in hindsight, even though she couldn't move and she really couldn't see what happened, it probably um, saved her life. So Hectate is there and um, he's basically writing a report. He's getting the story. So Scout is saying, you know, we were walking home. We couldn't really see. I didn't have shoes on. We heard somebody behind us. We thought it was Cecil Jacobs because he was messing with us on the way there. Um, all of a sudden, like I'm pushed over, I'm rolling. Somebody's fighting my brother. I hear grunts and, you know, screams and yells. And then all of a sudden, like there's two bodies and that's all I know. Um, and then, so Hectate's writing all this down. He's writing a report. And then Hectate says, um, Hectate says, well, well, who carried Jim home? And you all, before I answer the last two questions of your study guide, I have to tell you all, I've read this book like 15 times, probably more than that. I, I think I have the whole thing memorized. And, um, I was reading, rereading it this morning <laughs> and it could be because I'm, I'm pregnant and just always, um, my emotions are all over the place. <laughs> but my husband was like, are you crying? And I was like, yes. This part makes me cry every single time I read it. This part and the part where the, the balcony stands up, you know, because Atticus is walking by. So I like was crying, literally reading this chapter that I've read so many times. And my husband was like, are you crying right now? I was like, yes, this book is so good. So <laughs> Tate is like, who, who carried Jim home? Who was the fourth person? And it's also kind of creepy in the movie. He's like kind of a creeper, but they're like in Atticus's living room. And Scout's like, well, ask him yourself. He's right there. And who was standing in the corner the whole time? Boo, he was standing there the whole time. And so he like is a creeper just like in the corner. And in the movie, he like stands there like this. He's such a creeper. Okay, so then I say, how does Scout finally introduce himself? Finally, you know, her, Jim, and Dill have just been obsessed with this man. Their whole mission is to get him out of the house. They just wanted to meet him. She finally gets to meet him. She finally is meeting like her, her obsession after this whole book. And she says, hey, Boo. That's how she introduces him. Like she knows right away. She knows it's Boo Radley. So that's, it. that's the part that made me cry. And so... So sad. Uh, not really sad, but just so sweet. All right. Two more chapters to go. We're almost finished. All right. So there's one more video coming. Um, comment if you have any questions. We're going to learn a little bit more about um, Bob Yule and what he intended to do and, and kind of where we go from there in the next chapters. All right. Thanks, guys.